Assalamu alaikum. My name is Preet. I'm a non-Muslim. I'm of a Sikh religion. And um, I came across Islam like a year and a plus back through a friend. We are studying in the same university and he introduced Islam to me. He gave me a couple of books to read because I used to look at the way he was practicing Islam. He used to pray and his talks, the way he used to talk to me. And then after some time, uh, I used to ask him a lot of questions. So he told me, why don't you read the Quran in the translated version? So that's what I did. So uh, I was pretty convinced after I read the Quran that Allah is the only true God and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the only is the last messenger. But after some time, my parents came to know about it and they are very religious. So they are very unhappy that I was um, diverting into another religion. So they decided to take me to the temple to renew my faith. Despite the fact that I was um, not very happy, I could not object them because they would scold and like raise their voice and I didn't want to fight with them. So I just agreed, but I did not do it from my heart. I just did it to make them happy, to please them, to avoid any argument and all that. So now I actually want to ask you for an advice. What do I do? How am I supposed to convince my parents? How am I supposed to tell them that I believe this is the religion for me at least? Sister asked the question that she had been studying Islam since the past one and a half year. And she liked the teaching, she read the Quran, she got convinced that there's one God and Prophet Muhammad is a messenger. And later on, when the parents came to know, they took her back to the temple. And though she unwillingly had to obey the parents, she's asking, how can I convince my parents? There is a talk I've given, and there's a book of mine, Concept of God in Major World Religions. Here what I spoke was only of four religions, Hinduism, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. If you see my full lecture it even includes Sikhism 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 sister is a religion which came towards the end of the 15th century in the land of Punjab it was found by Guru Nanak Sahib and what the scholars say it's an amalgamation of many of the teachings from Hinduism and Islam and it's a religion of 10 gurus and if you read the concept of God in Sikhism if you read the text, not the practice. The text, if you read Guru Granth Sahib, if you read the first chapter, Adi Granth, the first verse is known as Japuji. It says that he is true. He is not begotten. And he is most powerful, free from all wants, and has power over all things. And there is nothing like him. So this of Japuji, matches very closely with Surah Ikhlas, which I said. So theoretically, Sikhism definition of Almighty God is quite similar to definition of Quran Surah Ikhlas. That's the reason what Sikhs believe. They believe in, they give two names, Omkara, which has a manifest form, and Ek Omkara. And there are various attributes given to Almighty God in Sikhism. They call Almighty God as Sahib, which means Lord. They also call him as Rahim, merciful. They call him as Kareem, beneficent. They call him as Bahe Guru, one true God. And Sikhism is against idol worship. It's against Autar Vada, Almighty God taking forms. It's even against idol worship. So the teachings of as far as concept of God is concerned, theoretically is quite similar. Practically, they do deviate here and there a little bit. But otherwise, as far as concept of God is concerned, it is quite similar. What my advice to you would be, you can give the translation of the Quran even to your mother and father. And ask them to read. And tell them that, can you point out something which is not good? Or something which disagrees? So you have to be patient. And you have to tell them. And you have to do the duty of a true believer. First, I would like to know that you did say that you read the Quran and you did also say that you believe in one God but you never said whether you accept Islam or not but by believing there is one God believing idol worship is wrong believing in Prophet Muhammad you do enter into the fold but whether you did accept or not I am not aware I would like to ask you sister that would you like to accept Islam? Yes I would like to but at this moment 
I would want to think, like, want to know how am I supposed to convince my parents first? Because I don't want to do something like they are not of the knowledge. And I told my parents that if I'm going to take any step, I will inform you. You will be informed before I take any step. That's right. So what I would request you, as I told you, that you can give my DVDs to your parents. There are various DVDs. And I know that so much of misconception there about Islam that most of the non-Muslim would get afraid. Oh, you're becoming a Muslim. That means you're becoming a terrorist. No, you're going to follow a religion of terrorists. You're going to violence. In fact, I always recommend that anyone who becomes a Muslim, especially the youngsters, first thing I tell them that there should be a difference between your behavior, what you did before accepting Islam and after accepting Islam. And as my son Farik, he told in a lecture that paradise lies beneath the feet of your mother. Even for you, sister, your paradise, even if your mother is a non-Muslim, paradise is not beneath the feet of your mother. Whether your mother goes to paradise or not is secondary. You understand, no? Because you have to love your mother, you have to respect your mother, that does not mean that if you become a Muslim, if you become, you have to disrespect your mother. So when your parents see the change, that fine, I used to request my daughter to do small things she never used to do. Now she's helping me, she's dabbing me, she's following my instructions. So you have to see that once you become a Muslim, there has to be a marked difference between your behavior, what was earlier and what was now. If previously you were a good daughter, now you have to be a better daughter. And when they ask you why, you say, this is the teaching of the Quran, this is the teaching of the Prophet. So once they find a marked difference in your behavior, in your kindness, in your obedience, if you are following 50%, try and follow 99.9 or 100%. If you're for 90 percent, try and follow no 100 percent. Only those things, what they tell you, which goes against the teaching of the Quran and teaching of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, those are the only things you should abstain from. Besides that, all what she tells you, even though you may not like it, you should do. So there should be a marked difference. For example, they may tell you, okay, wear clothes which are blue, and blue is not a favorite color. So if blue is not a favorite color, if your mother likes it, wear it. So she gets happy. You have to look after her, you have to care for her more, so that they should be forced to ask, how come this change is there? So once they are forced to ask you how the change is, because these are the teachings of the Quran. And that's what my son told in his lecture, what I gave a gist. So this is their sister. At the same time, you have to try and remove the misconception. I've written a book on the most common questions asked by non-Muslims. That book... I think it will be available outside. I would request the volunteers to give a copy to her. And these normally try and clarify the misconception what the media has spread about Islam. So if you give that book to read to your mother and father, maybe they will understand part of it, if not completely, and give the translation. And what I would say that never disrespect your parents. Even if they do things which are wrong, you as a daughter should not disrespect. As the Quran says, you can't say oof to them also. But same time, only those things what they tell you which is against Allah and his Rasul, these two things, is the only time you can disagree but politely. All the other things you go out of the way to convince them and to be good to them, be kind to them, there should be a marked difference. And then inshallah, they will be happy. Initially, they would feel a bit sad because but natural they would think that you're going into a wrong religion. But later on, because of a behavior, they'll get convinced, and you never know, you may be the zariah for the Jannah. Like your mother, paradise lies beneath her feet, maybe you may be the zariah, you may be the path which will lead your parents to paradise. Hope that answers the question, sister. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back, friends. I hope you enjoyed the video till the last minute. The sister asked a question that uh, I have my friend and he talked to me about Islam and I read books. I translate the Holy Quran, you know, I read it. And now I accept the Islam, but my parents are unhappy and I don't want to argue with them, fight with them. So they told me that we should uh, go to the temple and you should reunion your uh, fact, your Sikhism. So she said that from the core of my heart, I doesn't uh, accept the Sikhism again and I accept only Islam and how I should convert the Islam. So let me clearly do that Islam believe only, Islam is related to you only with the core of your heart according to your Niya. That if in your heart, if you uh, submit, if you accept that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last Prophet, you are automatically a Muslim. 
you know with the tongue uh, if you are saying with the tongue that ashhadu alla ilaha illa it's not necessary necessary is what from the heart let me clear you that if a person who is completely unspeakable like his woman is not, his tongue is not working and if he can't say kalma la ilaha illallah so how we can say that he is a muslim why from the gesture he will make that allah is one and prophet is the prophet so it means that heart is clearly the we can say that uh, heart is the place where iman has been protected from the core of the heart you will accept the islam so that's why you will become a muslim and that's why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the holy quran man kafara billahi min ba'di imanihi illa man ukriha wa qalbuhu mutma'innun bil iman just look at the words man kafara billahi min ba'di imanihi illa man ukriha wa qalbuhu mutma'innun bil iman like if someone force you that you should say that uh, there is no allah like for example if he uh, make a gun point on your head and he said that just say that uh, allah is one allah, there is no allah and if there is no prophet if he do not force you so if your heart is completely we can say that clear that allah is one prophet was with the last prophet but from the mouth uh, if you want to save your life and if you say that yet yeah, it's allow it's allow in islam that's why if uh, the girl said that uh, from the heart i accept the islam and just for the sake of my parent i say with my tongue so it doesn't mean that you leave islam no you are a muslim and uh, yes Uh, if you want to agree convince your parent you should go and talk to them that i accept the islam if you want to accept the islam it's very good religion from your habits from your thinking uh, you should make to convince them and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the holy quran that uh, you should uh, uh, obey your parents but if your parent taught you that you should do shirk so in that condition you are not allowed to follow your parents if uh, your parent want to make you that you should do shirk you should do the worship of idol idol so in that condition you are not allowed to uh, follow your parent and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly mentioned in the holy quran that hamalatu ummuhu qurha wa wadafu qurha wa sunna al-insana bi walidayhi husna wa inta hadaka li tushrika bi ma laysa laka bihi ilmun fala tuti'uhuma and if your parent force you to do shirk then you are not allowed to follow your parent i hope you uh, understand the video if you like the video subscribe the channel and share it with your friends